Whatever the world throws at you, take it on. This is my fight song. Take back my life song. Be unstoppable. The all new 2015 Ford Edge. And good afternoon, everyone, from the lobby of Bruner Motors on the corner of the South Loop and Lillian Street in Stephenville. Make sure you stop by. We'll be here for another 30 minutes. Plenty of free food courtesy of the pizza place. We have refreshments and Tarleton Athletic giveaways later in the half hour. Hope everyone's staying warm. Uh, I don't know what the wind chill out there today is, Coach, but pretty chilly. Pretty chilly out here today, but it's, it's wintertime, too. Yeah? That's what they keep telling me. <laughs> yep, and uh, still had not had a snow yet. I was talking to Mr. Bruner about that. You think eventually uh, we're going to get a snow or an ice here, but... You're from New York. You can probably I, live with that. My brother had a snow. He lives outside of Washington, D.C. Oh, yeah. So they, yeah <laughs> I think he got a snow this morning or it's coming that way for him. So he's, 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 I think he's getting ready for the snow up there. Want to welcome everyone that's listening online, TurtletonSports.com backslash listen live, and also on our flagship station here on the Turtleton Sports Network. That is 90.5 FM KTRL, Stephenville, Granbury, and Fort Worth. And uh, John Kirby with KTRL here today, so we appreciate all that they do to make sure these shows are on the airwaves. Our show is sponsored by Bruner, the Bruner Auto family, so thanks for their support and making it possible. Coach, just one game over the past week. Uh, it was an 18-point win over Eastern New Mexico, an Eastern New Mexico team I know that you think can surprise some people. I think they're very much improved, Casey. I think that they uh, they have some talented young men. They they you know they they're they're an explosive team. They have good athletes. They shoot the ball extremely well. They have a, a very good player that's hard to match up with in Domingo. He's kind of a mismatch, 6'5", 225, 30 pounds, but really handles it well out on the perimeter, and they kind of spread the floor for him some. And uh, He does a great job of uh, being able to score. And, and so uh, they're, they're, they're a team that, I'll tell you, some people, they're going to sneak up on somebody. And I don't think they've won a conference game, they said, in the last 19 conference games. But I told the coach after the game when he's coming up through, uh, we were shaking hands, I, he's going to, I, I don't want to go out there anytime soon. And I think they're going to beat some people. Yes, Doc Carter's team uh, has, some, has some real talent. And you talk about mismatches, it's just not Domingo. Uh, Javon Montas kind of prevented, uh, had a mismatch on the wings. Well, you know, he can really shoot the ball. He does a great job. Of, he doesn't get to the free throw line much, but he does a great job on shot fakes. And, he, you know, he really has a good IQ on how to play the game. You know, he's got good size. He really shoots it well, and he's got a quick, quick release. And uh, he played really well against us on Wednesday night. Yeah, he had 20 points to lead all scores. Domingo, 15 points and nine boards. Really, when you look at the stat sheet, Coach, the biggest difference was you were able to shoot 60% from the field, your highest uh, field goal percentage this season. Talk about the offensive execution. Well, you know, I was very pleased with that for a certain reason, Casey, because they, they throw so many type of defenses at you. You know, they threw a 1-3-1 one, at us, they threw a 2-3 at us, they liked a little bit of man, they pressed us some, they trapped us some, and, and so uh, it's always, you know, it's, we, we, when we recognize what's going on and we share the ball and we get the ball into the right spots, and, and we did that night, and I thought, you know, we shot the ball very well. Uh, we, we, we have a chance of, to score like that, and uh, you know I, I think that was a thing. The recognition of what they were doing defensively and how we how we attacked it offensively was a big reason we shot 60 percent. And uh, you, behind the arc, you shoot 40 percent, 10 percent, uh, 10 points over your season average of 30 percent. I know that's about where you want this team to be, 40. And I do, and you know. It, 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 to be realistic, the right people have to take the right shots. You know, Riddick is really shooting the ball from three right now. Uh, uh, he's really shooting the ball well. Uh, X came up, Xavier came up the other night, and you know he has the capabilities of shooting the ball like he did. And then uh, you know, we've been shooting. The other guys have been you know, coming in and Nosa shooting the ball better right now. Uh, Charles Hill is getting stronger on what he wants to do and, and what we're doing into our offensive areas. And so, but I think you know the. What you want to do when you're looking at the three-point shot is making sure the people that, yes. that, that can shoot there are the ones taking it. And that's what happened is uh, X and Deshaun Riddick combined for five of seven from downtown. Uh, free throw shooting coach is 58%. Do you blame that on Coach Chris or Coach Claudia? Who's, well, I'm who's sure coach not going to around me, that's for sure. <laughs> uh, you know, I'll, blame that. I'll, I'll, I'll feel pretty good when we, when we shoot it really well. And, you know, we've had some good free throw shooting nights out here. Yes, sir. Uh, you know, we're, there's no doubt that uh, you know Ramon is struggling at the line. We're trying to reform him or re <laughs> whatever yeah. you want to you know fundamentally trying to take his work on his free throw shot and and uh, that's what's certain us. You know, as, as a as a team, if you look at it, you know we're we were we were shooting pretty good right around 69 percent on the year, but you got to realize he's five for 17 or 18, and he's just not a great free throw shooter. But we have to go back and uh, work on his form. We're going back and uh, 
you know, look at the fundamentals of the shot, and I think he's going to improve as the year goes on. Yeah, and uh, I could hear you during the game kind of encouraging him, yes. working with him. During the game, you're working with him on that free throw shot. You know, and, and we're going to continue to do that. You know, Charles Hill was 18 for 18 coming into the game the other night. I think, you know, he's 18 for his last 20, so he's shooting free throws well. My cards was 5 for 8. And so, you know, we got to get the people on the line that, that, that are capable of making them to make them. So, when, you know, when he's struggling, we can make up for it with other players. If you just tuned in, visiting with Lon Reisman about Charles' 89 to 78 win, 89 to 71 win over Eastern New Mexico Wednesday night. We will hear from Charles Hill shortly. He'll be our guest in the next segment. Charles has scored 47 points over the last two games. Is he starting to peak at the right time? Well, I think he's starting to get comfortable. I think that he's, you know, I think that he came in and uh, he tried to learn what we wanted. He didn't rush it and he didn't, uh, he didn't play selfish. He played very team-oriented basketball. And, and uh, I think he's starting to get the feel of what we want him to do. He's playing with a lot of confidence right now. You know, uh, when he's not, you know, I, I, what I liked about him the other night is if, if, if a three doesn't go down, then he's taking it off the dribble and he's going in there. He's a great mid-range shooter. And, uh, and, and he's now, now he's going to the basket and, and drawing. When you go to the free throw line at Midwestern ten times, yeah. that's what I'm looking for out of him because he, is, he can be a great free throw shooter. So, you know, uh, all parts of his game are starting to come around for us. And, uh, you know, and, and I look for him to, in the last ten games, continue to improve and, and into the playoffs. Do you feel that Mike Harge had a much improved night on Wednesday night? I did. You know, Mike had nine assists the other night. Nine assists. And, and, and uh, two, and turn two turnovers and, 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 and five for eight. So he was efficient. He was efficient. On eight shots, he made five. And on eight free throws, he made five. And, and so he, he played a very efficient game. And he got other people involved in the game, which a point guard must do. And if we can get that type of same IQ out of him night, night in and night out as we get down into the last stretch of the conference race, he's going to make everybody around him better. 20 straight wins now against Eastern New Mexico Wisdom Jim. Uh, it's been, it's been 1996 was the last time the Greyhounds won at Wisdom, and I guess you've got to thank the 2,853 fans that made their way for that yeah, kind of support. I, mean, we, I think one of the reasons we've been so successful at home, we've talked about it time and time again, Casey, is just the tremendous support that we get here in Stephenville and in Tarleton State and with, uh, with the community and our student body and, and, uh, and the Tarleton family. And, as long as you know you, <clears throat> when our players go out there and they see that, it just motivates them to play. And, uh, it motivates them to, to keep their home court uh, advantage in this conference because you need to win your home games if you're going to compete to win this league. And you got to get on the road. You got to find a couple of wins on the road. And uh, right now, you know, we go on the road tomorrow. So if we can continue to play well at home, and I know our fans are there and they have an ownership in it and they 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 feel a part of it and. Uh, and that's the, that's the special thing about building the program that we built is that it's just not our program, it's, 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 it's everyone's program. And we'll talk here in a couple segments about trying to steal one on the road on Saturday at West Texas A&M. Tarleton improves to 13-0 since 2013 in games after a loss as they defeat Eastern New Mexico by 18. The Texans now 14-3 on the season, 4-1 on the Lone Star Conference, number 10 in the nation. We'll take a one-minute break. Coming up next, I will talk with the senior guard out of Fort Worth Trimble Tech High School, Charles Hill, when Tarleton Texan basketball continues right after this. It's time for this week's Tarleton Player Spotlight. Our guest today, the second leading scorer for Tarleton State, averaging 14 per contest. He leads the team with 28 threes made on the season. He's a 2012 graduate of Fort Worth Trimble Tech High School, spent three years at Texas Christian University before transferring to Tarleton over the offseason. Let's put our hands together and welcome number five, Charles Hill. Uh, I mean, we spent a lot of time on the radio. No, uh, if I'm saying you, it's a good thing. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, if you're uh, 0 of 10 from the field for, for no points, you're probably not <laughs> probably not seeing the radio guy. And I like to think we have a close relationship, and I, I don't know if you remember this, but there was a game in Vegas where you hit a big three, and it was probably the first time in my broadcasting career a player started to kind of harass me verbally from the, from the court. Uh, explain what that was all about. You remember that? Yeah. Because yeah. uh, it's kind of funny, tell me. <laughs> You heard me say something, right? In a it previous was, game. Yeah. It was in the previous game on the highlights. He was. I hit my first three. I probably went like two or three before that. And he just said, "Finally, Charles is three. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you gotta stop saying finally. <laughs> <laughs> and then you made a couple threes in that game. You looked yeah. at me and said, "What?" Yeah, that's for you, Casey. Yeah. So, <laughs> I thought that was kind of thought that was kind of neat. And now I kind of put more of a positive spin on things after <laughs> after uh, after missed shots or made shots. So, three games ago, Charles at Kingsville, you were held scoreless. Then you had 25 points in the road loss at Midwestern State. Did the level of competition in that game help you elevate your game? Um, or no? What was it not? 
I would, I would say yes, because I knew it was a big game for yeah. Charlton. I know, obviously, it's a rival game. And uh, I went into the game, I, I can't have a game like I had last game. And uh, just when you, I wanted to win bad, as Coach said before. He's seen, you know, seen it on my face. My teammates seen it. We just, we just couldn't come out with the win. Coach Reisman said after that game that he saw something in Charles Hill, some emotion and energy that he hadn't seen yet this season. Uh, is that an area you need to be more consistent in? Is there some truth in that? Uh, yeah. Uh, as, as sometimes I can just get very nonchalant about things and don't like I'm very interested. But uh, in that game, it was just like it was so amped, and I had so much passion for, the, for that game. It was you see, it, I was actually throwing out one of my players in a positive, in a positive way, of course. And, uh, and he was just like, I was, I was, was like, I've never seen you like that before. We need more of that. And uh, I guess maybe it was a focus to kind of continue that, and you did that 22 points against Eastern. How important was it to have another big game? Uh, it was uh, it was big for me and uh, our team, of course. Uh, we, we knew that uh, Eastern New Mexico wanted to come in to win. They haven't had a, a conference game uh, winning. We had just came off a lot. Mm -hmm. So it was big for us to get our, get our momentum back and not let them take any more momentum away from us going to the next game. Yeah, back to that Midwestern game. What did you think about the crowd? Because no knock on our friends at Kingsville, but we were talking before the game at Kingsville, and I said it ain't going to be like this on Wednesday at DL League. And you played in the Big 12. Uh, what did you think about that crowd at DL League? Uh, it was amazing. I, li I like playing. I like playing away with my back against the wall, and it makes me want to perform better. I actually heard one of the the fans behind me when I was taking the ball that right before, right after halftime. Says number five, you suck. I just, I just turned back. <laughs> they, they did that to another Fort Worth guy, Chuck guy, uh, a couple <laughs> years ago, and uh, he shut him up too in that, in that game. Visiting with senior guard Charles Hill, he scored 47 points over the past two games for number 10 ranked Tarleton State. Uh, you played in the Big 12 for three years, Charles. How impressed have you been with the talent level in the Lone Star Conference? Uh, it's, it's very competitive, uh, especially from the guard standpoint. Only thing, the only difference is the big difference is the size. Yeah, of course. Uh, but as far as the guards, I, I feel like a lot of players are Division One capable, but some things like don't work out as far as grades and stuff like that. But, and I, you took the next question out of my mouth. I was going to say, is the biggest difference as simple as size and height? We kind of saw that in the Texas exhibition. Yeah, game. for the most part. I mean, in, at the Division Two level, you have a six seven post, six eight post, but Division One you might have a six ten, six eleven, seven footer. Uh, but, but the athletic ability in the Division II level, it takes up for a lot of size. What do you think Cameron Ridley would do in the Lone Star? Huh? Or uh, that guy for Texas? <laughs> <laughs> he'll, he'll be a monster. He'll be a monster. <laughs> uh, you actually uh, played Tarleton in an exhibition game when you were at TCU, a game that TCU won by eight points. Do you remember that game? What were your thoughts about Tarleton after it and the talent level at Tarleton? Oh, um, actually, when we was, we was scouting it's Tarleton, and uh, we were talking about Carter, Ravon Carter. Yeah, 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 yeah. He was, our coach was like, you can't take this guy lightly. He's elbows on the rim. And the whole time doing the scout, he was like, what is elbows on the rim? <laughs> and he got the first dunk. I was like, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> and now he's a Harlem Globetrotter, so yeah. it worked out for him. He's doing big things right now. Yeah. I think he was at, um, he was in Sacramento and Golden State. Yeah, yeah. I think you got to meet Steph Curry. I mean, all, all kind of cool things that, that Davinay Carter is is doing. Uh, what's your best memory at TCU? Oh, by far, my freshman year we played uh, Kansas. Coming in, they was coming in uh, to forward that number five, right, number number five in the country. And the whole week, I was just like, I think we can beat these guys. And then we came in, we got a big lead on them. We was up by like I want to say eighteen. And we went to halftime, like our coach said, doing everything right. Just you know, keep doing what you're doing. We got yeah. win this game. And we end up winning. Uh, beat the number five team in the country. How about that? In, in Fort Worth or Kansas? In Fort Worth. Yeah, Fort Worth. Then the next, next time we went to, we went to uh, Kansas, it wasn't pretty. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little different on the road. Isn't yeah. It? Uh, visiting with Charles Hill, the Tarleton Texans. Uh, you decided to transfer out of TCU one year left. What made Tarleton the right fit for you? Uh, uh, when I when I opened my my recruitment recruitment process, um, I talked to Coach Cloudy. Me and Coach Cloudy stayed on the phone for like an hour or two one night, just talking about basketball, yeah. the team, just talking to each other about a life like we was like we was just friends, like we knew each other for years. And then when I came on my visit, I played start playing with the guys, playing pick up with the guys. It was like we've been playing together before, like we played together before, but it was our first time 
actually mm-hmm. going against each other. And, and Chuck Guy, a great point guard for Charles State, was from Eastern Hills, right? Mm-hmm. You're Trimble Tech. Did you play Chuck at all in high school? Yeah, yeah. You know him pretty well. He was a yeah. We uh, every time I go back home, we, we find some pickup and we play. I end up seeing him somewhere. He's a heck of a player, isn't he? Yeah, my first, not, not my first, my sophomore year was actually my first year in varsity. He was a senior. Mm-hmm. We played them. We uh, had a game plan. Right? We're not gonna let Chuck <laughs> do this, this, and that. So the first game we played him, he had four. In the next game, he went for like 35. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's a he's a heck of a player, no yeah. doubt about that. A uh, couple more questions for you. What you what would you say is the biggest area of improvement that you've seen in your game since you got the throw? Uh, my, the pace of the game, my pace in the, in the game. Uh, my first couple years in college, I was playing really fast and not letting things come to me. Now I I play with a better pace as far as my sock, my shot selection, and trying to find openings for other people. And sometimes I coach coach gives me he's like, Charles, you should have shot that. Like last game, <laughs> last game I made a drive to the basket. I seen uh-huh. Malcolm cut, but I was open too, and I dropped the drive. I ended up turning it over. It was like, Charles, you got to shoot that. So sometimes I get too unselfish. Yeah, that's right. And, but, it's kind of a balance there. You know, yeah, you don't want to be too on. You know, when you're missing open shots there that you should have taken. Uh, fi- final question. Finish this sentence for me. Charles, this team will reach its ultimate goal of competing for a national championship if it does what? The rest of the way. Challenge ourselves to discipline and take care of the ball. We, we, uh, last game, I, we, uh, Eastern West Coast shot like 50 something percent. Yeah, they shot, no, 48 percent, yeah. But still, you don't want a team to shoot yeah, 48 here. 40, 48 percent is too high, but especially when we, we've averaged about a 38 percent. 38, 39, yeah. yeah. So we, we want to get that down. And we actually shot the ball pretty well against them last night. 60 percent? Yeah. Not bad. But a couple nights ago. 60 yeah. percent. And we just got to limit our turnovers and continue to get better than this one. Charles, always good to see you, man. I appreciate it. One thing. See you Saturday. That is Charles Hill. Let's give him a big round of applause. We'll return in one minute. Coach Howell, we're going to get to the press conference again. And the Coach Vaughn Reesman radio show continues right after this. Coach, what can you say about Charles Hill? Uh, seems just like an outstanding young man who's really coming and bought into your philosophy. Well, you know, you, when you bring a Division One transfer in, Casey, you know, you, sometimes you don't, you know, you're, you're hoping you're getting a, a young man that's going to buy in because he's not going to have a lot of time with you. But we felt Charles is just up the road. He's at TCU, and uh, you know, we did a background check, and we really felt like he could come in here and, and shake some of the rust off and, and help our basketball team. And he, and he, and he has. He's. Uh, take care of his business both academically and athletically. <clears throat> he did well in his classes. And what he'll end up doing probably in this case is taking off the courses that he's taken here at Tarleton, he'll transfer them back into TCU and he'll graduate from TCU, which is which I'm just glad to see him. He's gonna get a degree and he's gonna finish his education and he's very close to doing that right now. So uh, <clears throat> he's a, he was a very good transfer for us. And then of course Xavier Smith came in from St. Bonaventure. He's a Texas young man too from Plano East. <clears throat> and, uh, and Xavier's been a good addition to our team. So, you know, you always hope that you're, you know, as you as you do this, you take the right type, type the right type of people that you want in your program, and they both have done a good job for us. Let's take a quick look around the Lone Star Conference. Three ranked teams this week: Midwestern State, number four in the NABC Top 25 poll; Tarleton, number 10; Angelo State, number 11. As we take a look at some of the games around the conference this past week, let's just look at Wednesday. Uh, so we're a little short on time, but there was uh, four games on Wednesday. You had Tarleton over Eastern by 18. Cameron coach defeating Angelo State by one in Lawton, and uh, that was a big win for Nate Gannon. Well, Nate's got a good team. We know how good Cameron is. Uh, they're they're a, a team that could win this thing. If you, you know, I mean, they are that good. And they're that competitive, and and we have a lot of respect for them. We had a tough game here against them when we beat them here, and and so that just shows you how how. The depth of this conference competitively is right now. I mean, yeah. <clears throat> top to bottom, people can beat anybody on any given night, and, and it's a great win for Cameron. And uh, we'll talk a little bit about West Texas A&M in a minute. So they win 85 to 81 over Commerce, and then the shocker of the night, at least to me, is Midwestern defeating Kingsville by 45 points, uh, 95 to 50. You don't see a lot of conference games that are 45 games. <laughs> yeah, you know, I was very surprised on that. Uh, can, uh, you know, they, <laughs> Kingsville has had two rough outings, so they got beat yeah. West Texas by 18 or 16, and then they got beat by Midwestern. And I know Johnny will get that team rebounding. Uh, they're still, I mean, they do, he does a great job, and uh, uh, I was very surprised on his court. Uh, four games around the conference tomorrow, which is Saturday, January 23rd. Tarleton at West Texas, Midwestern State at Angelo State, 
Texas A&M Commerce in Eastern New Mexico and Cameron at Texas A&M Kingsville. Uh, the conference standings look like this. Tarleton State in second at four and one, a game behind five and Midwestern State. Cameron four and two in third place. West Texas A&M in fourth place at three and three, a two-way tie for fifth at two and three between Angelo State and Texas A&M Commerce. Kingsville at seventh place at one and four and Eastern New Mexico in the bottom of the conference with no wins and five losses. Time now to preview what will be game number, uh, well, I'm going to do my math here, game number 18 of the season, Coach. You're going to go on the road, take on a 14-7 West Texas A&M team, coached by second-year head coach Tom Brown, and they're coming off a big win over Commerce. Yeah, big win, <clears throat> big road win in Commerce, 85-81, and uh, Commerce has had a great year, too, so it was a very impressive yeah. win for West Texas. Uh, you know, if you look at there, they've won their last three out of four. <clears throat> and they're playing very well right now, so we're going in at a time where they're playing well also. And our both teams are playing well, so we're, we look for the, you know, we look to go on the road and, and uh, just stay close in this game. And, and, you know, you're just looking to pull one out on the road wherever you can get one in the Lone Star Conference. And they have to defend their home floor, and we're going to go in there. We're gonna, I think we're going to play well, and, and we're going to see what happens. Here's a stat for you. The Buffaloes have taken 597 threes on the year. That's first in the conference. Angelo State second with 371 three-point attempts, so they're just going to shoot the three all day. That's they, part of their game plan. Yeah, they really, they you know, they put it up from all over and, and, and very deep. So you know, we have to have our game plan put together and, and definitely uh, defend the three-point line and make them beat us in twos. David Chavelvik is leading the conference in scoring. The sophomore out of Arlington Bowie, 20 uh, points per game. Uh, talk a little bit about the kind of player he is. Well, he's an outstanding player. There's no doubt about it. He's, you know, he's one of the premier players in our league, and uh, he's, you know, he's a very competitive young man. He's, he's got a great basketball IQ. He, you know, he's got the green light, and when your coach gives you the green light to shoot it from anywhere at any time, then you know he has a lot of confidence in you. And he's one of the premier guards in this league, and, and, and you know we're going to have to take the challenge tomorrow. Whoever guards him is going to have to take the challenge and shut him down. Yeah, he's taken 200 three-point attempts on the season. Uh, now they have a guy coming off the bench right now who's started a lot of the year, Jordan <laughs> Evans, coach. Right. He's taken 157 three-point attempts. You just said it. They, 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 they throw it up from everywhere outside, and so again, you know, we have to do a great job defending the three-point line, and you know, and make them uncomfortable. And I mean, that's that's their game plan is to shoot the three, and uh, our game plan is to make them force them inside there, and and, and, and make them shoot us off the dribble, and not give them wide open shots. Is it as simple as because as many threes as they take, they're only shooting under thirty, they're under thirty-five percent, around thirty-four and eight off from the three line. Do you want to keep them around that? Well, you know, you'd like to even be, now, I'd like to have it even lower. My, it's not the percentage that I'm looking as much tomorrow night is how many made threes we're going to let them have. Gotcha. You know, we don't, you know, our goal is to, can we keep them, can we keep them at a certain number of made threes yeah. in this game? And, and uh, I don't want to give that away, but, uh, you know, we have a, that's our plan and we have to carry that game plan out. So it's Tarleton State in West Texas A&M, 4 o'clock tomorrow uh, from the First United Bank Center in Canyon, Texas. We'll take our final break. Coming up next, we will spin the prize wheel and wrap up this edition when the Lawn Raceman Radio Show continues right after this. Uh, just a great crowd here at Bruner Motors here on the corner of the South Loop and Lillian Street in Stephenville. Thanks to our entire uh, crowd, the Plowboys, the Foul Play, basketball bands here. We appreciate uh, everyone's support. And we say thank you each week by spinning the prize wheel. So we're going to have three people come up and spin the wheel. I'm going to give you a little tip. Put some gusto in it when you spin it, and it'll help you out. Uh, we have a new thing up here. We took the date with Casey off, Coach Reesman. Can you believe that? <laughs> uh, yeah. So, And we took workout with Jerry off, and we have six tickets to the Baylor-Texas basketball game on Monday, February 1st. Uh, you'll be able to go to Baylor game on Monday, see Thurlton on Wednesday. So we've got six tickets. That's kind of our throw-in prize this week. So our first contestant, Ken Bailey. Ken, come on up. Spin the wheel, Ken. I know you rolled the dice, Ken. I don't know if you spin the wheel yet. So here we go. He's a real gambler. Yeah. We're spinning the wheel. Roulette wheel here. Like we're at the South Point Hotel. You know the one I want. Which one? What do you want? Oh, you want the tickets? We'll put some... Texas. Put some gusto in it. Texas fan. Yeah. Here we go. Ken's going to spin the wheel. Let's see what he... Remember, our grand prize spinoff is going to be on Friday, February 26th if you hit the grand prize. And you got it! Ken needs to go and play the lottery or something. Hey, Ken, are you available to go to Winstar with me tonight? <laughs> Colby Black. He oh, called it. Colby, come on up. Wow. Now, Mr. Burner, I don't think we have another set of tickets. Tickets are off, so if you hit the tickets again, you got to spin it again. Yeah, you got to spin it again. 
The tickets have gone, Colby. The tickets have turned into a spin again now. There you go. Colby. Wow. Now spin the wheel here. We'll see what he gets as they win. Oh, no. Oh, t shirt. Oh, t -shirt. <laughs> I told you, Greg, that it hits twice in a row. Peggy, hey. Peggy, come on. Where's Peggy at? Peggy, come on down. Peggy and Bill will be making the trip to Canyon. Uh, she she's got her purple sweater on today. She knows. Spin it. There you go, Peggy. She knows. So we've had uh, six tickets to the Baylor Texas game, a t shirt. And we've got oil changes, car washes, uh, oh, polo shirt. Polo shirt. Polo shirt. Hey. polo shirt. Polo shirt from the Turleton Athletic Department. Give everybody a hand. Thank you so much. The Turleton Texans nine and eight on the season, three and four in the conference. They defeat Eastern New Mexico by five points on Wednesday night. They're going to return to action tomorrow at two o'clock against number eight ranked. Uh, West Texas A&M, 2 o'clock, tip-off, 145 pregame show. Here on the radio, Coach Reisman's number 10-ranked Texans will tip off at 4 o'clock tomorrow from Canyon, the National Farm Life pregame show at 345 with Coach Chris Reisman pregame interview, starting lineups and more. Texan tennis gets their spring season underway. Coach, they've got an exhibition against Division One UTA tomorrow. Tomorrow up in Arlington. Yep, that's big for Coach uh, Drake and his program, Texan Baseball. We'll get it going on January 29th at 6 o'clock in Arkadelphia, Arkansas. And the defending regional champion Texan softball team will open up at home on Monday, February 1st against Texas A&M International at 2 o'clock. Visit TurltonSports.com for more information on that. Coach Reisman's show every Friday at noon. Coach Wilson's show every Thursday at noon for the lobby of First Financial Bank. Make sure you download the new mobile sports app by searching Tarleton Sports in the iTunes Store or Google Play Store for Android. I want to thank the Pizza Place for providing our food today. Thanks to our special guest. What a, a great job that Charles Hill did today. Appreciate Charles being here. Thanks to our producer, Aaron Young, back in the KTRL studio. Our on-site engineer, my friend from my left, Mr. Jody Lee Cottle. And thanks to Greg and Dwayne Bruner and the Bruner Auto family for sponsoring the show. Last but not least, thanks to each and every one of you for listening and for your support of Tarleton State University Athletics. Coach, time now for our final question. Uh, I, I don't... I hate to bring this up, but Tarleton has struggled all time in Cameron and in, in Canyon. It's six and fourteen, but you won two in a row there in a tough environment. What's been the key to the success there as of late? Well, I don't know, Casey. I just think that you know our kids have, you know, they have to take the floor out there and they have to be focused. And uh, the, the West Texas has always been a very yes. tough place to play, especially when it was in the box years mm -hmm. ago. And, and uh, of course, at the United Center again, they got you know it's a very tough place to play. It's a great environment, West Texas out there. So. No, it's uh, I, you know, we have not hit our stride yet. There's no doubt about that. You know, I know when we've hit our stride. We've won a lot of ball games. We're 14 and three, but we're not, we're not where I want to be yet. And maybe that's good. Maybe that's bad. It's you know, it's this time of the year. It's only you know, it's middle of January, and I sure don't want to peak in the middle of January. But we've done a couple of things in practice this week and made some decisions on some things that that I'm not going to divulge right now. That I think. Uh, I had to make a couple of tough decisions that I think that will make our kind of look and see if we're going to hit that stride. And you're always looking for something that's going to make your team peak or make your team a little, maybe a little bit more cohesive, a little better out on the floor and, and some adjustments. And so I'm anxious to see how those go tomorrow. Uh, it might not be perfect tomorrow, but I think I think it's going to help us down, down the stretch here in the next two or three weeks to develop into the team I think we might be able to become. Well, Coach, I hope you find it soon. Best of luck uh, against the Buffaloes. Appreciate your time. Thank you, Casey. That's going to do it for this fourth edition of the Coach Long Reason Radio Show from the 28 year head coach protections. I'm Casey Oates saying so long from Bruder Motors and Stephen Phil. Until next time, enjoy your Friday night, everyone, and we will talk to you tomorrow at 145 from Canyon, Texas.